so the widest my joiner can take is about an eight inch board. So uh, since I edge joined those, I'll cut these down to just over eight inches. And then, uh, then I'll face join them and uh, run them through the planer. Back to the joiner to do the uh, a face joint. And anytime you're doing this, you always end up with a decent amount of sawdust. So uh, I gotta go dump that. And then back to the planer and plane the other side. So now I got a face join, uh, ran through the planer, so now those are parallel. I'll continue to run them through the joiner because I want to end up with about an inch thickness, which is about the same as the walls on the, uh, the blanket chest. All right, so I laid these out uh, so I could show the green pattern. And I'm gonna try and alternate the, the way the rings go, but uh, uh, you can see I gotta take it back and edge join each of these before I glue them up. Um, I don't think, I'm going to have to use too much in the way of biscuits or dominoes, uh, but uh, I may throw a couple in there just to keep it, uh, make it easier for the glue up. Um, and uh, then we'll cut the thing so it's square, form some tenons, etc. So, so uh, now you can see after doing an edge join on all those, they come together very nicely. A uh, little clamp pressure will hold them together. So uh, now I'll glue these up. So now this is set in the clamps for a while. We'll pop it out. And then we'll take it over to the workbench and do a little sanding. All right, uh, it brought the edges together pretty well. I'll just do a little sanding just on those joints. So next thing we're going to do is uh, cut off the ends of it and uh, I'm going to use a panel cutter uh, that I made uh, to cut off the ends and then after I use the, do the first cut then I'll probably use the fence to do the other side. Twenty-three and three eighths, which will give me an inch on the front and the back. So uh, I'll make it just a hair more. And I'll run it through the joiner just to clean up the edge. All right. Uh, I may not notice, but I did a little nick um, on that edge. 
So I took a little bit more off so I can hide it. How well you can hide the mistakes. Next is a piece of stock for the breadboard edge and I'm gonna make them probably about two and a half inches wide. Uh, Cause I have a board here that's about five and little over five inches. So uh, the board's gonna dictate how big to make those. So next, for the breadboard ends, I'm going to make uh, mortises in the breadboards and then I'll make the tenons to fit uh, on the uh, top. But uh, marked the center line and kind of lined up the, um, the, the fence so that that way I have uh, it pretty much in the center. I'll flip it around and then go through again uh, afterwards to make sure it's uh, perfectly centered. And, uh, then I adjust the uh, depth stop because I'm gonna leave about three quarters of an inch on the back end uh, so that that way it doesn't go all the way through. So, nice center, go on, and I'll make the uh, tenon uh, for the rest of the board, but I have one more of these to do, which I won't film. All right, so I uh, put some uh, score lines on the top, and I used a little handsaw to cut a little kerf there, so to prevent any tear out. But I did this little kerf along the edge of both sides um, to make sure that I had a nice crisp edge and uh, didn't have as much tear out since I'm going to be using a, a dado blade and uh, I thought that you know I had a better chance of having some tear out if I didn't do a, a smaller cut first so I did a little kerf and now I'm going to run it through the uh, uh, dado blade to get the make the tenon for the top. All right, so I adjusted the dado blade up a little bit. And not as far as I am gonna be for the finish, because I think I'll use the shoulder plane to uh, finish it off and then fit it so it fits just right. So, I have a tenon created. Um, I'm going to use a shoulder plane to shave it down, and I'll take a little bit off each end so that that way it'll get hidden as well. But, uh... So, next, uh... I'll see how well the 
in fits. I think I'll get that out of the way. All right, so now I'm gonna try and uh, get this tenon to fit in here. Um, size it down. So I'll use a shoulder plane to get it there. All right, so after much work, I got the uh, breadboards uh, fitted with those tenons. Um, so now I'm gonna route up, take it over the router table, run over this edge and the two outside edges. Like I said, and leave the bottom flat and I'll round over these outside as well. So I'll we'll knock those off and take them over the router table. A little tear out there, but I'll sand it. And nobody will know. And to round over the edges here, I uh, thought it'd be easier just to use the router uh, than it would be to take it to the router table. So. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, drill three holes for uh, dowel rods. We're going to do some oak dowel rods to hold it in and that way it'll let the, the panel move a little bit. So I'll glue the middle six inches or so and then the, uh, up the dowel rods will just be what holds the, uh, uh, the breadboard on on the outsides. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I found was a piece of three quarter inch or three eighths of an inch uh, um, oak dowel rod. So I'm gonna mark three uh, spots on both of the breadboard edges and then take a little scratch all and use juice so I can get it right where I want. Then we'll take it over here to the drill press. I made a uh, just a little filler piece to stick into the, uh, the mortise so when I drill it, it doesn't blow out. And I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm just going to uh, just going to come probably two thirds of the way through the back piece, so it won't actually show on the back, but uh, it'll be locked into that area. All right, so next step, we're gonna put the headboards back on. And you can see there's still a little bit of play to go front and back, which is fine. And we'll tap those on. And what I'll do is I'll throw a couple clamps on there while I drill through with that same 3 8 inch bit. And one thing I will do is put a little witness mark on here so when I want to line it back up, I can. Take my 3 8 inch bit, center one. And I'll do the same thing for the other ones. If they're not drilled all the way through, 
when I take the breadboards back off, then I'll um, finish up and go all the way through. Okay, and we're through on all of them except for that one. I'm gonna put a little something behind it. I'll do it on the rest of the way. So what we want to do is elongate the two end ones. We'll leave the middle one, the three eighths of an inch, but we'll elongate these two. See that's elongated out a little bit. So it can move just a little bit up and down. All right, so now we're gonna glue up the breadboards. So slide those off. And I cut some small little dowels. So what we'll do is we'll put some glue on, middle six inches or so. Good. All right, so I had to cuss a little bit. Um, one of the breadboards actually cracked. Uh, so good thing about wood, you grab another piece. And luckily I had cut one extra piece. Um, so back to the mortiser. Go through there, drill holes, same bit, uh, and I'll just be a little bit more careful on the next one. All right, so try number two. Uh, I made a new piece, mortised it out, drilled my holes, uh, and uh, did a test fit. So now I'm again going to try and glue the um, middle six inches. Uh, I am going to learn from mistake and I'm actually going to use clamps on there while I tap the uh, uh, piece in so the pressure is not going to uh, split this out. We'll see how it goes.
All right, so next I want to uh, cut the protruding uh, pieces of dowel that are there. Uh, I've heard of some people using like um, playing cards as a spacer. This is just a little random article sander pad. Uh, I just put that there. And I don't have a nice little flush cut saw, so I use this, but, uh, but just a little spacer. Sanding it flush. And I'll do that for all the other ones as well. Hmm. So here's the final product. Um, I stay, didn't show this part of the video because um, it's kind of boring, but uh, stained it, wiped it down, let it dry, and then I put um, probably about uh, two coats of water locks uh, to, to seal the outside and uh, did put about three coats on the, the top to give a nice sheen. Um, I installed the piano hinge back here and then I did just some chains for a hold up here. Uh, the cedar bottom I didn't finish, I just left that bare. Um, but uh, came out okay. Uh, you know, the, it'll last much longer than I will, so uh, it's just something nice to do. So, thanks for watching.